So in the first part of this uh, video, I waffled on about behavior driven development, um, talked about a bit about what it, what it is, how it differentiates from test driven development. Um, and we got Visual Studio set up with a, with spec flow in unit. And we got a project set up um, that has um, spec flow in, in unit, um, added to it and we've got a feature and we've defined we've basically written in the text for our feature and we're now going to define our scenario and we're doing that based on some requirements that have been defined in sort of pseudo code so as i mentioned as i think i mentioned previously the, the simplest case we have for uh this definition of a um, next delivery date <clears throat> is for a patient whose status is stopped or removed patient whose status is stopped or removed, their next delivery date should be null. Um, so that's, that's the kind of the easiest one. When, they're, when the patient is active, patient status is active, then all very complicated and stuff. But when the stops are removed, very simple, null. So we're going to define a uh, scenario that, that tests that, uh, that case. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to say, given I have a patient and the patient status is stopped when I recalculate calculate the NDD, the patient NDD should be null. Given I have a patient and the patient status is stopped, when I recalculate the NDD, then the patient status should be null. So the patient NDD should be null. We're going to call that scenario patient is stopped. Um, so now Let's just see what happens if I try to run that. So we've got, we have this notion we can now run tests. We can run these tests repeatedly over and over again. So I'm just going to try and run them, see what happens. So we can see that's all kind of worked fine. And we can see our test explorer here that is saying no tests have been run. And the reason no tests have been run is because there's no test code. To generate the test code, uh, we can do that we can, we can generate the framework for this automatically. So we can kind of see that this text here is kind of slightly kind of purpley in color. And that's that's indicating that actually there's the test code for this has not been generated yet. So I can right click on this and select generate step definitions. That tells me what definitions I have in here that don't ha that haven't got um, steps generated yet. And you can see that actually there's four. So each one of these lines is, is, is creates a new step uh, in the in, in the test um, and here we're going to generate that into a new class file so we're just going to tell it to go ahead and generate that it asks me where I want to generate it so I'm going to save that it's created the file here NDD calculator steps so I can open that file up and we can now see if we look at the structure of this file uh, we've got a class NDD calculator steps which basically links to the NDD feature um, probably links to the name of the feature um, and for each one of the um, lines in the scenario um, it's created a method um, given I have a patient given the patient status is string when I re recalculate the NDD then the patient NDD should be null now, a few things to notice here these are matched to the NDD feature using these little um, annotations. Second thing to notice is for one of these methods, it's actually passing in an argument. Um, and that's because I've um, done something special and put uh, one of those elements in, in quotes. If I create another scenario, um, I can reuse these same steps um, and it will just then reuse the text. And if there's something where, it, where it's in quotes like that, I can pass in different values. So we'll see that coming together um, in a little while. 
Um, so now I have um, now I have, have code. Um, we can we can go and kind of fill in these steps, and we'll show what that looks like shortly. Um, so we can see here. If I look at the again, look at the, the text under this. Not run tests. Patient is stopped. There's no matching step definitions for one or more steps. So hopefully now. Um, in fact, actually now, so we have got those matching steps now. So if I run those, it'll probably bring up the same uh, output. Not anyway. Um, uh, yeah, it's not running the test because they've not been implemented, which is what this pending status means. Uh, so the error beforehand was because this, you know, we didn't even have the steps. Now we've got the steps with the pending statuses. So still not running them. So now we've got the, the skeleton framework for our writing out our tests. Now we just need to fill them out. So uh, first line says given I have a patient. So for that um, I need to create a patient. It's actually easier. Oh, yeah, yeah, come on. Patient equals new patient. And I'm going to add up here a new property, and that's going to be patient. It's going to be patient. Save that. So we've now got an error because so I've now filled this out. This works fine, um, but it's now complaining because I've created an instance of something which doesn't exist. So I'm going to go and generate myself a patient. <coughs> so there we have a patient class. Um, let's just make that private. Um, so now I've just added that in there. So let's give that give that value a better definition. We go to string status. So now I'm going to add in here patient dot status equals status. And uh, now we can see that's just going to complain because I don't have a, um, a patient status. Value there. So, what I'm going to do here is um, uh, string status. Go back to here, and hopefully, that's now fine. Recalculate the NDD. So for this, I need an NDD calculator. So I'm going to create an NDD calculator. I'm going to spell that right. NDD NDD calc equals new NDD calculator, and I'm going to say patient equals NDD calc dot calculate patient. Um, so that's all fine apart from the fact that we don't have an NDD calculator. So we're going to generate our NDD calculator. Um, and there we have it. We've got that. But unfortunately, um, we don't have a calculate method. Um, so we can probably just go and generate that. So we've got a method for that. Let's just call that public. Public. And now let's just say return patient. Uh, 
Um, so class entity calculator, public method, patient, calculates, takes in a patient, returns the patient. So we've got calculate and we're saying now that uh, the value of the patient NDD should be null. So we're going to say assert dot is null uh, patient dot NDD and we're going to give a message saying NDD should be, let's not say expected, expected to be null. And it's complaining about assert. So we're going to add in the end unit framework. Uh, does that. So and now it's also complaining that we have an NDD value there that it doesn't like. But we can get rid of that. Because we don't need that at the moment. So we'll add that in there. That'll be a date time. And it's going to be optional, um, and that's going to be called NDD. And it's going to complain about that. So we're going to add system in there. So now we've got that. So now we've got a patient class, we've got an NDD calculator class, and we've got an NDD calculator steps. So given I have a patient, patient equals new patient, get patient status equals status, um, NDD calculator, NDD calc, patient, blah, 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 patient, yada, yada, yada. So it is null, NDD expected to be null. So let's right click on that and run the scenario. So now we can see our test has passed. It's all good. Um, so that's all very well and good, but we know but that seems a little bit simplistic because um, we're not actually doing anything on our calculator. You know, we've set the patient status, um, but it's not doing anything. So what we what we could do in order to make this, you know, we want to know that we we, we want to know that the NDD has actually been set to null. So maybe if I say, I could up update the scenario now, so given I have a patient, the patient status is stopped, and I could say, and the patient NDD has, NDD is today, is set to today. When I recalculate the NDD, the patient NDD should be null. So, so we're gonna illustrate that that actually changes we can see that that text is in kind of purple. So I can say generate step definitions. There's only one that hasn't been generated yet. Um, if I do generate, it will generate a new class file and I don't want to generate a new class file. I want to copy that, I want to add the patient, the, the values into the file. So I'm going to copy those methods to the clipboard. Uh, now I want to go back to this uh, file, I can just create a new line, paste the text in, save it. You know, it's now if I go back to the NDD feature, we're not purple anymore. So, given the patient NDD is set to today, so what I'm going to do is just say patient dot NDD equals date time dot today. Simple as that. Now, when I execute this, not so clever now, is it? Now we've got a failed test because the NDD is expected to be null, but it's not null. So <clears throat> now I can go first to my calculator and say if let's let's create a um, Right, yeah, let's say if patient dot status equals we're saying stopped when we stopped uh, patient dot in the no. Run the scenario again. And there we go test passed. So that looks pretty good. Happy with that. It's doing what we wanted it to do. It's actually setting, it's doing something, it's taking a positive step to set the uh, NDD if the status is stopped. 
So what else do we say? Well, we said if the patient is removed, that will also do the same thing. Um, so if we go back here, go to our feature, let's, um, let's copy our feature, so copy our scenario. Change it to page that's removed. And we're gonna, you see we can actually use exactly the same scenario, but pass in just a different value, different status. So if they're removed, then again, patient energy should be null. So we save that. Run the spec flow scenario. Now we've got one test that passed for patient is stopped and one that failed for patient is removed. Again it's an NDD expected to be null. So now I can go back to my calculator and I can say something like I think what is it I want um, Uh, let's put a, uh, let's put inactive So, so now we want to do something like, if I remember rightly, dot contains. Using a link, and then hopefully that works. So now we can see got an array of statuses stopped or removed, that contains that and then d equals null. So now we should be able to run our feature again. Now we have two tests that passed. So what we're showing you in this video is how to define scenarios, how to fill out the steps for those scenarios, um, how to use that to drive out the definition of uh, our classes and our logic, um, how to pass arguments into these step definitions and also how to then kind of reuse that code for multiple scenarios.